How are you, ladies? There for years, and yeah. all the leaders in the county went there. Yeah. Now you don't do it. So, hmm. so it was just out there. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to use the microphone. I know we don't have a ton of people here, but for the benefit of those who are live streaming, and I think there are some on there, it's easier if we do this because they can certainly hear. And if you don't, uh, through our feasibility studies, I've learned that uh, we need to do this because they can't hear. So uh, I am Matt Muller, Director of Safety and Communications here for Connellwater Valley. Uh, my pleasure to be able to be here this evening and put the show on for you. Uh, we have a special, special guy here tonight from the Pennsylvania Attorney General's Office, uh, Agent Jerry Mitchell. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about Jerry. Jerry was with uh, the high school here on Monday. We had about 1,250, maybe 1,200 students in here talking about the same things that you're gonna hear this evening. Uh, Tuesday, I think we were back at CDIS. We had 900 fourth, fifth, and sixth graders back there. This coming Monday, he'll be back in here with middle school, and then Tuesday, we finish with the uh, both elementary schools in their building, so that'll be kind of neat. Uh, and those, those presentations are tailored a little bit to age-appropriate stuff and don't give your information to anyone and those sorts of things. But Jerry's been with the AG's office, I think, uh, what we talked about. Well, you've been doing educational stuff, what, 10 years? Yeah, probably. About eight years with the educational stuff, and you've been with the department for a while. So, again, Attorney General's office, top law enforcement agency in Pennsylvania. And when there's cyber issues, cyber issues come right to these guys. So. 
Again, I, I drug my feet a tad to see if we can have any more people come in. Uh, we're proud to be able to offer this, and potentially down the road, we have multiple other presentations that they offer as well. So this is just one more thing we're trying to do to provide parents whatever resources we can to help you out, because uh, it's tough enough. Uh, I've been there, I raised three kids, they graduated from here, uh, but I just think back to even their days and even my days when I was, we just joked, because both of us realized we graduated the same year from different locations, but things are just different today than what they were years ago. So without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Uh, Jerry Mitchell, PA Attorney General's office. Good evening, everybody. Um, and thanks, Matt, for me, reminding me of um, how old we both are. Um, we're both from the encyclopedia generation, so that says enough right there. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming out. Uh, some more folks will uh, come through as time goes on, but uh, having a discussion with your kids about cyber safety and digital citizenship and what they're going through. It's really been an interesting journey, especially within the past eight months. And not just here, Hemphill School District 11 in Harrisburg, still in Susquehanna, you name it, because I have 12 counties under my jurisdiction. My background is information system management with a concentration in application development, which is a fun way of saying I'm a tech or I'm a geek. Uh, don't let the size fool you. Yeah, I did play semi-pro football too, so. Uh, when they brought me on board, the reason being is, hey, we need people to understand how crime and technology are intersecting a whole lot more. And you go back 10 years ago, it was just like, things were still a little bit more manual, but nowadays, you know, the phones and the tablets and everything that they have for most of our kids, this stuff is their therapist. This is where they go for answers. This is where they go just to have a discussion with someone. And when I talk to your kids in this, uh, or if you have high school kids, I talked to them the other day about what's going on. It was pretty interesting. First thing I did when I talked to your kids was just tell them all the, the world they're going to inherit and all the incredible opportunities they're going to have. The technology that they're inheriting is just it's ridiculously cool. It's very progressive, very intuitive technology because it really aligns itself with human needs and tries to actually uh, intercept or understand basically where they want to go before they even know. And I also reminded them well, all, what they're going to be doing, how they're going to be doing it, and why they can't go back or even start with the bullying and the threats and the harassment and using this stuff in the wrong direction. When we talk about this, and all of you should have gotten a brochure. If you didn't, you can let Mr. Mullen know uh, you didn't get a brochure. And you can take a look at his cyber safety in our schools. I took a look at these numbers in here, and those numbers are dated. They're a little bit dated. I'll get into a discussion of the numbers that you see in there, 43% uh, of this, 1 in 10, and that. But we need to understand the world that our kids have inherited. And oh, by the way, with the AI that's here, and it's only gonna become even more entrenched in their lives, that's something you've gotta start paying attention to because the AI technology that is coming, you can just now, you know how you get a phone call now, you're just like, oh, it's, it's uh, you know, spam or something like that. Now the technology that's out there where you can just morph anyone's voice and sound just like that person. It is here. And it's only going to become more entrenched. So that technology discussed to a limited uh, degree. But the apps that we discussed, the platforms that we discussed, and the things that they can basically uh, engage in. Things like when we talk about bathroom challenges or the different type of challenges, this stuff was discussed the type of challenges that they have out there, do they want to engage in this stuff. High school level, the challenges start to be just in a fitting, cool mode. It could be drinking, taking drugs, any kind of challenge, some sort of a challenge where it's like a dare to do something uh, to show bravery, some sort of an action or activity. Putting this stuff online, listening to what's online, TikTok rules their world, we all know that. That stuff out there, the non-stop content of TikTok, and how they take this stuff so seriously, 
these challenges out there, reminding them, don't put your life at risk over this stuff. The middle school is going to get a heavy dose of this. I was at one of your intermediate schools a couple of days ago when we had this discussion. Don't put your life at risk. Don't listen to this stuff. Because they are, once again, these type of challenges, whether it's hitting somebody or swatting somebody or some sort of a threat or swallowing something. Who in here is on TikTok, by the way? Anybody here on, got a TikTok account? Okay. All right. I love the low rise arms. They're almost like, me. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, I got to raise my arm. Yeah, I got a TikTok account too. But again, you take a look at this stuff. And you look at the content that's out there. And then whatever you look at past two or three seconds, now the algorithm tells the, the system basically that you're interested. And you get more of it. Case in point, challenges like this. When we're talking to our kids and we're talking to them about what's going on out here, communication is going to be a real big deal. Everywhere they go, and this is a the world they don't know any, they don't know a world without Google, Yahoo, or Bing. They don't know a world without text messaging, messaging, uh, Alexa, Google Home. And now in the vehicles, where you can basically do a little bit of everything in front of a vehicle. They don't know a world without this stuff. To them, this is just par for the course. It's the norm. <coughs> so when they hear something out there, and if somebody's telling them to do something or some sort of a challenge, they sit back and they think this stuff is real, like, okay. And then they see a friend's reel that's out there, or a friend's video. And they see their friend's video has gotten, I don't know, thousands of views and thousands of likes. Now, all of a sudden, Man, you know, I, I gotta catch up. I gotta. Be, they want to be part of that crowd. Yeah, it's a real different world out there, and these kind of challenges like this one here, which is the blue whale challenges, it comes in a variety. Whether it's ten days, fifty days, but basically each day you take a dare. Uh, the administrator assigns some self harm tasks like cutting until the fifth day when the participant is supposed to commit suicide. Now, this kind of a situation right here, that last day may not ultimately say do something that will cost you life, but do something that will consistently cost you seriously bodily harm, like jump off a balcony, go to a high branch in a tree and jump, try to run across the street with your eyes closed, But I know we grew up in a world before this stuff existed, so we understand more manual, more direct communication. We understand a lot more uh, without this kind of technology in it. To them, it's a whole different world. The connectivity, the need to fit in. Oh my goodness, if I didn't get a lot of likes. Oh my goodness, if somebody says something online, it, it, it basically criticize me, they take this stuff to heart. It is, it is as real as somebody walking up to you and pinching you on the arm. It is that real to them. They, they see the virtual world as a real world, and they're just, what do I do? What do I do? And that's where we at the Attorney General's office, we see a lot of complaints and a lot of issues, community issues, school district issues, really erupt from this, like threats and bullying and the harassment that goes on. And kids are getting to the point where they're shutting down. We're gonna go over the different apps that we see out there as well too. But again, we see this stuff nonstop. So how do we connect with our kids? And how do we have that type of connectivity and that kind of communication with them where they can get where we're coming from and vice versa? Earlier this year, I started talking to a number of students in breakout sessions. They asked us to come in. I was with the state police a couple of times, pull us off duty, and pull the state police off duty, go talk to them. I flat out asked groups of sixth graders and seventh graders one question. How many of you are comfortable talking to adults? Or how many, put it like this, how many of you don't like talking to adults? When I put it like that, almost every hand went up. So when I see in this brochure, and if you go to the center, 
Terrorists are coming back there. It says one in 10 victims will inform parents or trusted adults if they are being abused physically or online. One in 10. So that means the other nine don't. Amplify that over 300 kids. Okay? You're talking 90%, and actually it's greater than that. You could really round that up to probably about 94. Our kids, in so many cases, don't like talking to us. I asked them, Clara, how many of you just keep your problems to yourself? Both of the hands went up. A lot of our kids don't like talking to us as adults. And I was like, really? And I said, okay, let's be real with each other. Why don't you guys like talking to us as adults? All the hands start flying. Guys and girls alike. It was not you know, one greater than the other. They don't listen. Adults blame us. They blame us for what happened. They listen to the teacher before they listen to us. They uh, think they know everything and they, they get it wrong. They, they, look at this, they, just, they just started going over all a litany of reasons why. Now, listening to all these young minds, that's based, that pool basically could easily represent a larger pool. And I think it does because I was doing this in different districts, not just one school district. High schoolers too. They just don't, our kids have a problem with, there's a communication or a moat or a gap between us and them. And then they take the technology, the reason why I'm going over this, they take the technology, your Instas, your real, your Be Real, the new app that's out there, Instas, your TikToks, and that becomes their therapist. So how do we help get a better communication uh, connectivity with our kids? One of the uh, examples that I had is uh, one of these agents in our office, and she retired now, but she relayed something to me from the FBI, and you know, they had done their survey. How you doing, man? Can you do a demonstration with me up here real quick? I'll make it painless. Okay, here comes my mom. Oh, we look just alike. All right, here comes my mom. Let's see. I'm 10 years old, which means she's whatever age you want to be, all right? Mom wants, to, mom wants to communicate with me. Mom wants to talk with me and communicate with me. So she sits me down and she sits right across from me. Now, there's a, you know, that, there, there's a strategy there. There's a, you know, an element there where there are times when that works, and that's definitely because she wants to have that eyeball face to face. But again, now, of course, we're the same height, but let's say I'm this big. Mom looks intimidated. Mom looks scared. And I know that mean look, I know that, I'll call it the mom look. The mom look she can give me if she has something to say when she feels as if I, I'm out of step. That's intimidating to a, to, a, you know, to a youngster. She can be very imposing. We all can, and we don't realize it at times. <clears throat> Now let's change the dynamic. Say mom sits down on the couch with me and we sit down right beside each other because in this mode right here, in my, in my line of work, this is called interrogation, by the way. <laughs> but I'm gonna sit right here and I'm gonna sit right beside mom. Now, mom's not looking directly eye to eye. I can look down. I don't have to all necessarily look her in the face. She doesn't have to necessarily look me in the face. And now she can easily say something like, hey, I'm on your side, I'm on your team. And you're on my team. Now we look like teammates. That's why teammates always sit side by side. That's why you go into any negotiation. Everybody who's negotiating, they don't sit scattered across the room. They always sit in unison. This brings a different dynamic. And now I can sit back, hey mom, you know, maybe you know it's, it makes it an easier or more comfortable environment just to talk, just that one dynamic. Second dynamic, get them out of the house. See, home is where all this stuff happens. Home is where love is dished out. Home is where you know we eat meals. Home is where you know a lot of good times. We watch TV and discipline. Thank you for sitting down. Thank you. I'm sorry, I forgot you were standing. <laughs> but it's true. But guess what? When you have something to say, sometimes we have to get into their world. 
And how do we do that? Get in our balance. Hey, what are you up to? Eh, nothing much. Well, you know, I'm heading to the outlets. I'm gonna stop by the Nike outlet or Dick's Sporting Goods. I'm just gonna see if, I, see if I'm looking for a t-shirt or something. I'm gonna grab a slice of pizza and a burger. Hey, you wanna come? Tell me a kid that's gonna turn that down. I'm an adult and I won't turn you down. So <laughs> get them out the house. Once you get them in the car, play that music. I know, believe me, it, it, I can't stand most of today's music. I, I generally stop around Bruno Mars and Maroon 5. I don't know what else is out here anymore. I don't know what else. Look, I'm sorry, but I'm a Hall and Oates and Wham and Foreigner kind of guy. <laughs> you put on Expose, I'm your guy. But today's, but put on their music. Let them, you know, let them rock out and you know, just let them feel the, feel the energy of the moment. And while you're cruising down the road and you're heading to, you know, I feel good spot. I say, hey, listen, let me ask you a question. <laughs> Be honest with me. Y'all did that, and then just ease into it. But again, you got them into their mode, into their space. Get them into their space. What you don't want to do is turn the car into the house. Well, yeah, I did do this, this, this. You what? And next thing you know, they're like, uh-oh, you know, I'm right back in trouble again. But let them get into their own space and you get into their space. Because this whole thing boils down to communication and our office is seen and we are all seeing this. We're being inundated with the TikTok and the Instas and the Reels and everything. And the reason why we're behind the ball so much is because they are their own community. They're communicating only with each other in so many cases. Older kids, younger kids, but look, when we were their age, did we keep secrets? Everybody in here better, better nod their head. If anybody in here didn't keep secrets, I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> we all kept secrets. At some point, I, I still got, I'm still scared of my mom. And a woman is 68, she, she tells us she's 60. We, we, we know she's 79, but she's been, she's been fibbing to us for a while. But the point is, get our kids into their space so we can have that communication with them because they are turning to this stuff and something else they're turning to and they think it's cool to do and it goes off the beaten path, a little bit of technology, but it still holds on to its value there in terms of vaping. Folks, we're having this discussion regarding vaping right now because this stuff is flat out dangerous. One cartridge is equivalent, what are those dual cartridges is equivalent to 21 cigarettes. Now imagine you're vaping and they put this stuff in and they're doing this stuff odorless, colorless, very addictive and they're doing two, three cartridges a day. It's like doing three packs of cigarettes a day. Like I said, they're doing that every like four, three, four times a week. Reminding our kids that when it comes to this stuff, the, the dangers to it, what nobody talks about, and I did research on this with a couple of nurses, but nobody talked about vaping. What usually is incorporated with this is energy drinks. Now you have a mass influx of nicotine, and caffeine. Kids, what, about 14, 15, 16 years old, body is still grown, lungs, kidneys, everything's still developed. It's not fully developed yet. But by the time they're 19 and 20, you're sitting around here having these massive respiratory problems. Having a discussion with our kids. In Australia, when they sell nicotine, they put the most horrible look you can imagine on the package, if you've ever looked at it. We call it, we grab, collaborated with law enforcement in Australia, you should see what they put on their nicotine packs. It looks like death becomes, becomes them. It looks horrible. I don't do that in this country, but again, the tobacco industry now owns the vaping industry, which we knew that was gonna happen. Because when you make $38 billion in four years, you will have a lot of calls that come. And that's what happened with jewels. So again, this stuff is just as, uh, just as, they say here, concentration, just as addictive, more addictive. So we did want to remind the public about vaping. Any questions before we go forward on any kind of technology before I get into the app scenario of all this stuff? Because that's where we start to get into the meat of it. Anybody want to go to dinner, my treat? <laughs> 
a couple of <laughs> Got it. But let's start talking about apps now and what our kids are using out here, uh, why they're using it. First things first, privacy apps or vault apps. Who's heard of those? Hidden calculator, and now the apps nowadays, which can have a, a user face or a face of anything you wanted to. It can look like anything. You can name the look, name the app, and basically it's a privacy, and they call it a privacy or a vault app. Basically, it will now store images and uh, videos that are absent of the camera roll. They're in what we call a branch folder. So that's what you have here in these apps. What makes these apps so problematic, and it shouldn't be, but what makes them so problem problematic is this is where a lot of young minds store images and videos that they shouldn't have on their phone. Because if they're sent to their phone, and they try to hide it, and it's, it's not gonna do them any good. 16th floor of our office, executive wing where we keep our tech guys at, they're gonna run through this, they're gonna tear it apart and, and within a minute or two. They're gonna, we're gonna send our bots, robot programs inside there, search and find, okay, here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. And to the fact, child pornography laws will be applied and those are very harsh. If they have something on their phone, on their device, they've received, and then they start showing people this one, to receive it and then start showing people to stay in possession of that stuff. Possession of child pornography. Basically, someone who's under 18 having illicit photos, pictures, and videos of someone else. My friend Lisa, and I told this, this story to your kids. My friend Lisa, what was I, 11 years old? I was 11, she was 10, her brother Calvin was 11. We were best friends when we all met when we were kids. And me and Calvin were at middle school, high school, college, bought houses around the same time, so we've known each other all our lives. Lisa called me up a little bit over a year and a half ago in tears. What's going on? Her son's about to be prosecuted by our office. Why? He took pictures of himself with nothing on and somebody else, and he decided to keep this, keep, basically keep this stuff, and he put it in a cloud browser. You know who turned him into the authorities? Google. Welcome to the world of skin recognition software. If our young minds are using apps and they're using Google or Microsoft or Yahoo, transmitting this stuff, which is pretty much what they're gonna do, and we're then we're trying to use what we call torrent files, basically, I like to call them uh, back road files or back road programs trying to send this stuff secretly, they have no idea of what we know. So make a long story short, her son had done this. He was getting sentenced. He was 15 when he was getting sentenced. His sentence will last probation and being monitored by the government. His sentence will last until he is 28. That's what happened. If you don't understand that, here's where I'm going with this. When he hits 18, and that record becomes a public record now because he's seen as an adult, for the next 10 years of his life, he will have an AOPC docket sheet. Any job he goes for, any college he goes to. Somebody who just wants to be in a relationship with the kid. People who look each other up all the time. We all look each other up. People are gonna look this stuff up. He, he's gonna get to, He's got such a hard road ahead of him. It's gonna list the crime. Under the Crimes Code 2709, about child pornography. That's why trying to hide this stuff in vault apps, this is why we're alerting the public and letting the parents know, hey listen, if somebody sends you something inappropriate, get that stuff, but look, let me know immediately. We gotta call the cops, we gotta do something, but don't just, Oh, it's just on your phone, oh, don't worry about it. Taking pictures of themselves. These kids are young and they see technology as a no big deal scenario and they don't understand the laws that have been enforced. In downtown Harrisburg, under the legislature, they've already passed 
I'm learning enough laws to help govern itself with new laws constantly being, constantly, let me put it like this, current laws constantly being amended. That's why you have all those amendments going on. So having this right here, understanding this and having this kind of uh, technology in front of you, yeah, it has its place in society, but not for illicit use by young minds like this. Ah, time. When it comes to this thing, and it's constantly evolving, TikTok is now like the front runner. It's, it's the hottest thing on the planet. It's gotten a lot of, it's gotten a bad rap. You got people out here basically ripping it because they're saying it's state sponsored by China. The company is state sponsored by China. I can't, I can't say yay or nay to that. What I can tell you is, and it's been proven, that our society is being heavily targeted by TikTok. Our youth are being heavily targeted by TikTok for things that are not allowed in China. They sit back and say, no, we don't do this and don't show it talk. But here, they're being targeted. Reminding our young minds when it comes to TikTok, and nobody is monitoring the 13 minimum age, when you've got over a billion users, there's nobody that's gonna monitor that. Uh, parents express concerns that there's a lot of inappropriate language in the videos, so it's not appropriate for young children. Lastly, by default, all accounts are set to public so strangers can contact your children. That is very true. TikTok, the algorithms in that have set a new tone. TikTok, it's pretty much the new it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. TikTok is uh, it's the next level. I've looked at this stuff. It has set precedent. Reels, the reels that have been generated from the stuff, the videos. Now that stuff, YouTube had to basically. I'm sorry, not YouTube. Um, Facebook basically had to go ahead and redesign its programs to incorporate TikTok videos because there were just so many of them out there. They had to basically get in on the market. They had to go where the action was. So now you can upload that stuff to Facebook seamlessly, and then Facebook owns Instagram. You know how the world works right about now. Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google pretty much own the world. There's always gonna be an argument about, oh, well, you know, BlackRock or something like that, investment firm, assets under management, about $11 trillion. I'm talking about information. I'm talking about assets under information. Those companies I just named, they own the world. Our kids are growing up to the society and throw in this monster right here. Why our kids or why parents are so, should be so concerned, reminding our kids the stuff you see out there, be careful of that stuff, posting, believing in that stuff, wanting to share this out there, share things that are out there. People use it for business all the time. It's used for plenty. Nobody's gonna back away from it because there's too much exposure and too much content out there. But the content is basically reacting to the user. If you look at me, I'm gonna show you more. If you look at me, I'm gonna show you even more. Content reacts to users. Please remember that, and that's what our kids are basically reacting to. The content they look at, the program reacts to that and gives them more of it. And then it starts to diverse a little bit in a couple of different areas, and it gets even more, in some cases, more vulgar and more illicit. This one's still around, and I've talked to our young minds. Hey, what are you guys using? Is this, is, is this still, still around? Oh yeah, 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 we use Snapchat, yeah, we use Snapchat, but it's not the big dog, it's, it's not the big kid on the block anymore. A few years ago, when there were school shootings, and then the one in Florida, the, the stone Mason one in Florida, <clears throat> a lot of, uh, when, when it came to like, basically finding out what happened inside the building, Snapchat was a, that, set it off. Law enforcement, the first thing they did to me, the first thing they did, who has a Snapchat account? When kid goes to that school, do they have a Snapchat account? Do they have an open account? Where are they going live? The answer to that question was a whole lot of people, and all they did was just take that content, 
record it, download it, and next thing you know, they had everything. This used to be the big dog. It's still one of your top five, but it no longer is the... And by the way, apps will vary, or platforms will vary, vary by region. What's hot down here in New Oxford may not be hot in Lancaster. What's hot in Lancaster may not be hot in, I'm talking about Lancaster City, in, in out in Hempfield, which is a suburban area. It really, got, you can literally go two miles and there'll be a difference. What's hot in Harrisburg, the dozens? That's not really hot in Susquehanna Township, which is a mile and a half away. So different areas have a different personality. But do you know about these apps out here? If you don't, I strongly encourage you to just get lettered to it. Take a couple of minutes and oh, let me look at a YouTube video. How does Snapchat work? How does, who was the last one I looked at? Oh, TikTok, how does TikTok work? Take a couple of minutes, just how does it work? You're gonna see two minute videos, three minute videos. Take a few minutes to get lettered to this so that now you can, oh, okay, now I understand what you're looking at. Listen to our kids, what are they using? Just, just listen to them and they will tell you even when they don't know, because they're talking to their friends. <clears throat> I ask any kid, and especially, do you get in middle school and elementary school? How many of you are rocking uh, YouTube? Every hand goes up. I'm on here looking at George Michael video, Faith, and they sit here looking at, looking at, you know, any and every content they can. This monster right here, Google is the most powerful company on the planet. They have everything. Google is just ultra powerful when it comes to technology, when it comes to basically having indexed information. Information about information about information about information and so forth and so forth and so forth. Nobody has done it better than Google. And the AI technology that's coming, the 1.0 and they're probably at 1.5 now. Google is leading the way. There's a couple of companies over across in Singapore, and um, I know China's got one too, but some of your Philippine countries, but they're not gonna talk to Google. The point I'm trying to make with this one right here, YouTube owns this company, or Google owns YouTube. And this right here could also be another platform for our kids to communicate with who? any and everybody out there. You're communicating on this, this is its own network. Uh, you're communicating through messages. And then after that, you sit back, people are like, yo, hit me up on this, hit me up on that. And that's how this stuff starts to fly and pop off. Next thing you know. So here's an under 18 individual. Here's a child predator. And next thing you know, that connection starts this. And the next thing you know, another conversation, and another conversation, and they keep conversing. Hit me up on this platform. Yo, message me. And how, what am I doing? I'm getting closer until I'm right up on that young individual. And by the way, Messenger is another one. I gotta really incorporate that up there. I know it here. Reminding our kids when they are out there and they are messaging and they are added to group chats. That is huge. You can add somebody to a group chat and they don't know they're at it. And so next thing you know, they get a notification that somebody is saying something about them. Once again, reminding our kids to take themselves out of group chats. And Messenger and WhatsApp. I think I might have WhatsApp out up here. But WhatsApp, that's another one. You can now call someone and they never have your phone number. It's a, it's a more private way to communicate. You just do it through a name. You don't dial a number, you dial a name. I want to call Max, dial his name. Max on this platform, I'm on that platform. I'm calling people over in Australia. Hey, just, hey how you doing? Hey, what's going on? Educators. Hey, what's going on? How you doing? Reminding our kids, yes, you have this technology. Please remind them. The people who they may communicate with out there, they have got to keep their guard up. This is the world. I'm of the mindset. Yes, we try to keep things out. 
But this stuff is everywhere, so if you're going to use it, here's how you gotta, you gotta be safe with it. Here's how you <coughs> install those safety factors. Because trying to keep the, the dam has already burst and the water is already in the house. Now we can go ahead and the water is everywhere. Now we can go ahead and get a bucket and try to keep it out or we can try to navigate through this stuff safely. WhatsApp and Messenger, those are the depths, and there's plenty more out there. I'm just talking about the more popular ones. That is how you are going to communicate, and that's how you're going to call people and video people, uh, FaceTime with people with, with an element of privacy. Our kids think this stuff is okay. Every adult in this room knows the, uh, the hazards that can come from it. And it wasn't, of course, when they did it, they did it from a communication standpoint, but reminding our kids on YouTube, it's the same thing. You can sit back and you can connect on YouTube and you can just start speaking like it's no big deal. Also, video games. Congratulations, your kids have all created a whole new profession called gaming. And he's in my office, very good friend of my, my former uh, partner. And she works in another division now. Her son is going to Elizabethtown College, paying for it on his own, because he is one of the hottest gamers, hottest gamers on the planet at one of these weird games. Look, I'm sorry, I saw the Frogger and Donkey Kong. I don't know the rest of this stuff. <laughs> Look, you put, you put um, Miss Pac-Man in front of me. Now, now, now you're talking. The rest of this stuff, I, I, can't, I can't get with it. But her son has a deal with the Detroit Lions. How would you like it if your kid came home and said, hey, I'll be able to pay for college. He's got enough saved for the first two years, and by the time he's done with that, he'll have more for the last two. How would you like it if your kid came home and told you that? And he'll probably be done when he's 25. He'll be old. He'll probably be done running his course. But by that time, the kid will, be have, will have made over a half a million dollars. But who is he gaming with and who is he talking to out there? Everyone who's gaming is not innocent or on the up and up. So that platform must be addressed as well, the platform of gaming. There's apps, there's gaming, there's programs, all this stuff, this is what we talk to your kids about. You might look at this stuff and go, well, it sounds kind of complex. Talk to a 15 year old or a 14 year old or a 12 year old. It's no big deal to them. They just, this is what they're breathing every day. When I was their age, I mean, my mom hated me. I mean, I took, my mom would give me five bucks a week for allowance, and I blow it at the arcade, mostly. And I'm sitting there playing um, Donkey Kong or Frogger or Defender. That was the norm. To come home, how much money is that, 50 cents? Nowadays, our kids sit in front of a the TV, they sit in the den, they sit someplace, and they're doing this stuff, and they're communicating with who? It's their norm where they're downloading games onto the phone. So while you're driving, they're in the backseat. One more thing I must say before we go on from this, going live, please remind your kids about going live. That is extremely hazardous. They are exposing you. They're expo or potentially exposing you and your family and sensitive information, sensitive things without you knowing it. I had complaints of parents who were driving down the road their kids, their middle school kids were in the back seat and husband and wife talking about different things. Some sense of, you know, in the house thing, even though they were driving. The kids going live and they didn't realize how many other people, which were quite a few other people, were listening to their conversation. Please remind your kids about going live. They're exposing a lot more than just themselves, and especially going live in their bedrooms when it's late at night and they're just talking to whoever. You will see that coming up. And after applications like Kick, this is still used out there. Kind of a walkie-talkie app where you can do a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, but again, group chats are out there. Hey, who wants to kick? Hey, did you kick, did you kick it tonight? That's the term. Whether you heard about it or not, but it's not in your wheelhouse because we are all over 18. <laughs> Did you kick it tonight? And again, 
one-to-one chatting, messaging, all this stuff. Look at it as like Kohl's, like Walmart and Target. Okay, kind of look at a lot of apps like the Walmart and Target. They both sell the same thing. The only difference is cosmetically, you know, the look of where it's placed. That's what a lot of, most of your apps are gonna have all these different features, feature features inside. The messaging, the video, the being able to video, and, every, and so many other things. Voice messaging. It's just how it's set up and how it's low. What's their secret sauce to it? How fast do you open up? How, how much more of a mojo does it, does it have in the community? And more entertainment value of it is it infotainment along with it can hook up to the vehicles too. We talked about WhatsApp. I'm not going to spend too much time on that again. A messaging app that lets users text, chat, share med media, including voice messages, messages, video with individuals or groups. Okay. Facebook owns this. Not sure if you heard about random video chatting yet. Ala is one of them. For now, you can just video chat with a stranger. Who's on that other end? Hey, how are you? Next thing you know, someone who pretends to be a teacher or an educator, or somebody who is in a profession that will appeal to a young mind. Hey, what's going on? Hey, what are you up to? You okay? Yeah, hey, mom and dad, kind of hard to talk to them sometimes. Yeah. Now they found your hope to ingratiate themselves into the lives of a young person. They basically ask, eh, kind of hard to talk to mom and dad, huh? <laughs> yeah, I know my mom and dad were like that. Yeah, I get it. Oh, well, I'm on here, you want to chat? You want something you want to say? Now comes the, the hook. Slowly and slowly, and slowly but surely they're doing this. Young lady got lured into this, and this was in the 2000s she got lured to the point where the person convinced her to come out and meet him one night, and she was abducted. Laid out the back, told her to be good, the trunk's laid out, it was bleached and plastic back there. This was out in the Pittsburgh area in November. She was taken from that area down to Virginia to a house where she was assaulted by this individual and two other individuals over a period of just under a week. They were recording what they were doing to this, to this young lady sent it to a perp in Florida. Call it crisis of conscience or whatever you want to call it. This perp freaked out and he called law enforcement. They traced the IP address back and they were able to get her back. Her name was Alicia. You can always Google Alicia's story. That story is online, Alicia's story. And the ordeal she went through and horror and everything that she's been through. We see the world a lot differently than you do. You see it, our job is to see it from a form of protection. What can go south, what can go sideways, so that you don't ever see that. And Alicia had a before and after moment. That girl was 13 years old. She just got married, well, she got married about four or five years ago now, and you now she's a young adult and adjusted, you know, She's now done, when it comes to child safety, she's been lauded by sheriff's offices, presidents, uh, governors, a lot of elected officials, but she's had a before and after. Okay, before she was 13 and then after. And it's a totally different world. How can really, unfortunately, can help can push that into a reality a lot faster this day and age. And whisper. Talking to you, talking to me, talking to mother, talking to church members, talking to somebody. Again, I'm looking at my mom here. And she she means well. But still, moms and dads, and boy, some of you dads in here, I'm looking at you. You got that stone look on your face, just looking at me. But that's just you, that's your natural parent parental instinct. You have that same look when you don't, sometimes you, we just may not look, realize we're looking at this young, young body, this young face, it's, it's intimidating to them. So they whisper their thoughts to someone 
blue bay three pulleys. <sighs> Think about this. Unique selling point, it is completely anonymous with users issued a random nickname in Polymorph where they can just change that up. There's always a business, the business side of this stuff or how to sell it. There's always a business side. The business side to this is anonymity. Hey, listen, you don't have to tell me your real name. But they're working towards it. They don't have to identify, have an identity when using the service. Primary way of communicating with someone on Whisper by responding to their whispers. Once you look up one of these apps, you see other apps related to it. And there's plenty of them out there. And I have talked to young minds, middle school and high school. And they are, I'll give you an example. I was at a high school in just outside Harrisburg. And had an audience like this. There was about 900 people in that audience. Then we had a breakout session. One for ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. 11th grade was Dr. Them. Breakout session of about 20 kids. It was 20 kids. Principal's in the room with me. And I asked this question, because the, the direction where we were going and things they were saying, I said, let me just ask you all something. How many of you feel lonely? 18 hands went up. Principal was standing there, the man's like, and I said, you know, what do you, let me ask you something, what do you do like, when you just feel lonely? And one kid said, he, he said, you know, he just goes on, he said, what makes him feel lonely, it's a, he just like, he looks on all these apps, on Facebook, on your Instas, and all the different images, he sees, like, everybody seems happier than him, he sees all these smiling faces, he sees all this happiness, people like, looking like they're living their life. And he just feels like, man, I wish I could get to that happy level. And he said, he just goes, so he goes on there and looks, reads the, um, you ever see some of those inspirational memes? Some live, you see plenty of them all the time, just inspiring you to just do this or do that or be the best you can be and all that. So he looks at all those for inspiration. Never once did this kid mention anything about an adult. Mom or dad, guardian, grandma, granddad, uncle, aunt, whoever. Never once did he mention anything about an adult. So he goes online, different platforms, and he whispers. And he wasn't the only one. Middle school follows suit. A lot of our kids learn the technology from who? Older kids. So when we talk to communities about this stuff, reminding them, again, communication is going to be one of the more powerful effects we can have with our kids just that connectivity that we have because we are fighting a cultural war with this stuff. That is a fact. We're fighting Oculus. We're fighting the Instas. We're fighting the constant bombardment of technology in your ears and in your eyes 24 hours a day. How do you learn nowadays? That has to take up. Basically, how do you travel? There's an element of technology to it. How do you drive a car? You got anything new? And boy, you really want to come to my identity at that when I talk about that. Because I will show you how your cars are even listening now. <laughs> and what you do about that. But again, this stuff right here, and the damage you can do. And each one of these bullets, how this stuff is basically combined technology to give them a new platform twist. Reminding the public that communication is still, our communication, our one-on-one, -on -one, we are still the most powerful entity in our kids' lives, even though they have this stuff. This was used a lot in, as they get into the collegiate year, they start going to college, senior years, junior, senior, and then get into the hot or not. Mark Zuckerberg, he was one of the earlier guys who was using this stuff. And this is basically how he got burned early on and how lawsuits start flowing his way because he was just raving people. Or women. Nowadays, women, guys rate girls, girls rate guys, people rate each other. Are you hot or not? And they just load up pictures. Not the best path, the best uh, direction to go. We remind, I reminded all of your kids of this. When doing this stuff, think about the shared environment. <coughs> because their names are being at signed 
But you know what I mean? An at symbol and then their name. So now anybody can see who was at sign or who is tagged with this stuff. They are being at, not a sign. It's, it's a playoff of a sign. It's at sign. You are being at sign. At symbol and sign in your name right, right beside it. You're at sign. And their names being attached to this stuff, colleges are looking at. Universities, trade schools, the military, future careers. Middle school and high school got a dose of this technology, especially during the high school, because there were a number of them. Oh, yeah, I forgot. There was a group of uh, young men here. They look like a boy band, and they were all graduating this year. So if you got to graduate this year, and you're probably sitting right here, and they were just as rowdy, and they were, they were good natured. Boy, they were happy as a clam, and they should be. But again, this kind of technology right here, hey, can you get them at sign, and now their names associated with it. And again, a lot everything that went along with that image, comments, the, uh, the tread that goes along with it, a father or two. Ten-year-old girl told me she had a. Boy, did she like, she, she thought he was cute, she, she thought he was this, she thought he was that, blah, 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 blah. Where'd you meet at one tender? She was 10 years old. You know, she's not even my daughter and my skin, I mean, I just literally cringed. You are how old and there's some boy that she likes. Scared of the Jesus out of me. Reminding our kids not to do this online dating sites like Tinder. Reminding them that this stuff, this is more plenty of fish. Okay, Cupid, you know what? Because again, nobody's really checking actually if they really are of a certain age. So reminding our kids again, being, having their, basically a tread lead to this stuff or another at sign. That's what's really, everybody's talking about hashtags. Hashtag this, hashtag that. Yeah, hashtags are in effect. And then again, so we're at signs. If I want something specifically to go to Mr. Muller, I can just go Matt, at, at Matt Muller. And guess what's going to happen? He's going to get a notification of some sort of, if he's on that platform, boom, hey, he's been, you know, he's been tagged into this. That's the world they have in. So again, reminding them of this stuff, especially if they're underage, no way. Oh yeah, I forgot about this one, the hookup app is what it's called. And folks, we're right about the time. I didn't want to keep you too long tonight. I can, I'm long-winded with this stuff because again, I've been doing it for over, showing my age here. I came on board when Windows 95 exploded. That should tell you what I'm at. I was one of those college kids when Windows 95 came, I'm like, ooh, ah, you know. And kept going with it, I fell in love because initially I was gonna be a lawyer. But then I switched up and said, nah, I'm going with this tech thing. I've never regretted it. But now I work for basically a law firm slash criminal justice slash uh, consumer justice, you name it. It's a big job to keep society safe. But it's something we don't back down from. Agents are dedicated their lives to it, like myself. Whether it's evening, broad day, like, you know, we're seven days a week. We are not pinned out. We don't close at five o'clock. So, if there's any questions you guys have now, now's the time. Agent Mitchell, you have, you have one. Sir. You mentioned group chats as being huge for our youth right now. Mm -hmm. They were added to this group, group chat, and something was posted, and they were basically included on it. Yeah, or even airdrop. If they accept an airdrop, but they weren't asking. Oh, yeah, and airdrop is another big one out there. 
First things first, immediately let someone know. Let an adult know that's the first thing you want to protect themselves and, and protect others. Let somebody know who you is. Do not say, bro, if it was something that was sent to them, say it's something inappropriate. Because let's just say the group chat is not always a huge chat. But let's just say there was something that was sent to them highly inappropriate. Sexual pictures, uh, language to go along with it. The first thing they gotta do is let an adult know. That's one of the first things they should do is let an adult know. Mom and dad should be the first, very quickly too. Because when an investigation is due, they wanna be part of the initiation process, not investigative process. And if they are, and it shows it was sent to them, uh, okay, what did you do with it? That's gonna be the next question. Did you take that, now pretend this is a cell phone. Did they take that device and did they show it to other people? Because if they did, they showed that imaging or video to somebody else, that's a charge. Because now they're basically showing the laws are very harsh with that. So they definitely want to immediately not show it to anybody, let an adult know. Yes, they still have the device, but they definitely want to let get involved, law enforcement involved immediately. So that they can have a record of showing, here's where I begin engagement with law enforcement, not I'm just like, oh cool, this is no big deal. Oh cool, and they're just, they keep viewing it. Because every time they do that, I can tell you what, they can go out of it and go back in and go out and go back in. They can get themselves into trouble because we can also, I don't know if you know this, there's a counter inside of each one of these as to how many times you view something. So you can even get in trouble for you viewing it. Because you count as well. It's not like, well I didn't show anybody else, I'm the only one to view it. Yeah, okay, that's still illegal. That, now the first time, oh well, yeah, I know what it was, and next thing you know, hey, I call law, you know, show mom and dad, call law, you get that first two, two or three times, mom and dad, adults, the responsible adults in their lives, you know, were shown so they, they, they acted, but okay, I looked at it 20, 30 times, it's been a week, it's been two weeks. A lot of people don't know that they, you know, there's counters inside this as to how many times a picture or a video was viewed even on a personal phone. Please just let all the safest way to go. Our kids have got a, uh, a weird world there in Erickson in some ways, but they are our rock stars, and I told all your kids that. They're gonna go out and do some incredible things. And we need them. They need us and we need them. We need them to listen to us. We need we need them to understand how dangerous it is. They need us to learn from. It's a, it's a partnership. Like I just said, it's a, it's a son to mom partnership, father to child partnership, it's a partnership. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. This is not evil. TikTok is not evil. Facebook is not evil. How we use it, that's what tells, that's, the, that's where things start drawing the line. Folks, I am not somebody who's, I don't have a talent to make a good show of politics with this stuff. So I'll just give it to you straight. And I meant what I said. The damn of the water is all around us. I had parents come to me Years ago, talking about, oh, you know, I just don't, I, I want to not give them a cell phone. Here, they're middle school teenagers. I don't want them to have a cell phone. I don't want to have this. I don't want them to have that. Okay, fine. I said, so yeah, they're either going to view it from a friend's house or they're going to go out and get a phone and you don't know anything about it. And then now they're just going to keep it hidden because you can just order those on Amazon now. Pay like a minute to get a uh, hook up to their own, you know, hook up to a provider, to a, to a telecommunication company. We, 
trying to stick our heads in the sand will not ever work with this stuff. It's only becoming more entrenched. Oculus is here, virtual reality, uh, artificial intelligent voices, you name it. The content is all here. It is not going anywhere. It is a trillion dollar foundational industry. They are not going to suspend that, found that industry to say, well, you know, my farm kids, they'll just sometimes do their due diligence. But I'm telling you right now, communication and reminding our kids and just having that conversation. And again, sometimes surprising them, doing a phone check. Having a conversation, say, look, here, look, you're gonna have a phone, I understand that. You're gonna have this. It's not for your future, it's for theirs. Guys, this is, this is so that you have a healthy future. You know, she's my mom. It's like she's got her feet. You know, she's had, you know, she's like, I got my career. I got my. We got to make sure she's trying to make sure that I have mine. You know, whether she gives me the hard look, the mean look, or, or not. I, but she, but the point is, the technology isn't going, and it's going to be more into wearable technology is coming. What's next? Where are we going to be at in two years? Forget five years, two years from now. I'm constantly looking at this stuff. Podcast. I'm one of those weird geeky guys who don't drive down the road. I'm constantly listening to what's what's happening next and how can I apply it and basically go home and I start executing programs. There are kids that go to this school who are already rock stars at this stuff. No, you're middle school. I'm not going over there. There are middle school and elementary kids who are already programmers. This is like breathing to them. The same way when we had a car. When we had a car. I don't know. Some of your parents look really young. <laughs> you do. Some of you look real young in here. But <laughs> our kids, the sharing, the, the environment, it's a, it's, a, it's a global share. It's a community share. It's a school district share. We're all sharing this stuff now. Please do yourself, don't do yourself a, a disservice to think, oh, well, I'll just try to keep, I'll just try to put, I'll just try. That crap is not going to work. Your kids are going to find it because your friends are all using it. It's how they get If they're going to trade school, college, or just going straight into the job, the military, I don't care what type of direction you're going, they're going to use it. I hope I didn't give you too long of an answer. <laughs> Anybody else? Mr. Muller and I put this together a month, month, two months ago? About two months ago. And he and I have had we played phone tag for a minute, but when we got on board with each other, there was some straight hard mission, and we got each other immediately. It was kind of like, you know, you know, it's it sort of like the, I'm sort of like the dark skin version of him. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but the point, because our point, our whole point was safety. The man was just, he just bent on safety, and so was I. He was like, here's the school, here's the school. Okay, what date? I blocked out two weeks for this guy. I said, okay, you tell me, okay, let's do this. Here's what's going to get presented. So he knew everything that was coming, the content that was coming, and basically what it was going to lay out. For the elementary, the young ones, it's going to be basically stranger danger, not giving out personal information. What is personal information? And who should we give this stuff to? And if somebody asks for it, who should we tell? And also bully. So that's what, what we're talking about, kindergarten through third grade. Fourth graders, it gets a little bit more mature. We're going to get what the middle school has got, but I'm going to bring it down to, of course, fourth and fifth grade, I'm going to bring it down to age appropriate, just the language of it. Because inappropriate content, inappropriate pictures and videos, it's an open source world. I'll say this, and it stings the hurt, and I'll finish, I'll finish up with this, but this is the truth. At some point in time, and they already have, your kids are going to see pornography they're going to see something inappropriate. It's an open source world. They're going to see vulgar language. My God, TikTok offers that. The point is, how do we re how do we help them to react to it? Our office is inundated with this stuff. Law enforcement is inundated with this stuff to the point where a lot of times they don't even respond. They just give you a quick response over their phone. But we but we don't give up. We keep on going. The technology is already here. Our office is dedicated to helping everybody navigate this stuff, not try to get a bucket and keep it out of that, the water out, because the water is all over everywhere. The brochures are good. They do offer some good suggestions, especially up front. 
uh, where it talks about communication in the first step, access controls, online safety plans, no warning signs. I think that's probably the biggest tip right there. But that tip of talking to our kids is just, once again, she's mom, she's talking to me, she's fun. When you're talking to a kid, and even if the kid is taller than you, in height they are, but in knowledge they are not. They are wildly smart, but they are not wise yet. So I'm talking to mom and I'm listening to mom. I might be taller than mom, physically. And she's looking at me, but she can still outwork me in knowledge in a second. So you're still, even, don't worry about height. You're still looking at somebody who's this big in size and still getting in that side view of her. And just, and she reminded me, hey, look, we're on the same team here. I'm in your corner and you're in my corner. That is huge for a kid to hear. And it helps go, it can help, or it can help things go in a different direction. Just now I know mom's got my back. No, and I already knew that, but it's cool to hear and I'm not getting ripped. <laughs> Guys, thanks a lot for listening. Thanks a lot for coming this evening. Uh, like I said, I try not to go over too much, but just want to make sure you got all the knowledge you need. Thanks, everyone. Excellent. Give a round of applause for Adrian Griffin. Again, Jerry, there's a lot of things you could be doing right now. He's coming out of Harrisburg in the Attorney General's office, and he was, I appreciate your kind words, but uh, again, he, he did absolutely, uh, when we hooked up the first time, I found out they did this. He, he rattled off a litany of things that the Attorney General's office will present to us. Cyber safety, that was the first thing that jumped out of his mouth. He said, well, we've we got some good things on cyber safety that we really need to, to, to share. So uh, look for more of these things in the future. Uh, again, he did book up two weeks for our, for our kids in our district. Uh, pretty simple, but why is because our kids deserve this. You know, and you're here tonight, we appreciate that. That's the first step in, in doing the right thing. You know, it's a tough, it's a tough, tough world. You know, we see it. Uh, I saw it as assistant principal, a principal for five years, now director of safety. Uh, Mr. Beeman sees it here with, in his role with me in middle school and also in high school. Um, and we're not unique. We're not isolated in this school. We're no different than anyone else. We all see it. Uh, and you're on the front lines as well. But Mr. Mitchell brought it up. We, we're a team. This is a team. And, and for someone like that to come down here from Harrisburg to donate some time here this evening, it's pretty powerful, uh, and there's a, there's a battle we have to fight, we're going to continue to do that. So you have my word on that, and again, uh, I couldn't be happier to be able to bring this to you, and uh, once again, our why is because our kids deserve this. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, you can always reach me, uh, extension 1023, down in district office. Uh, any, anytime you need me, have any questions with safety or communications, uh, I, I try not to inundate you with things, but again, one of the things we want to do is make sure that you know that you know what's happening and why it's happening and when it's happening. So, for me, that's a wrap. Appreciate everyone coming tonight. I uh, appreciate all of you on the live stream as well. Mr. Mitchell, we will see you in the auditorium here on Monday with middle school. A special, special group of kids. Thanks, everyone.